Hi. Now, we all know that in military history, Napoleon of France uh, has his place among uh, you know, all the uh, great geniuses of the battlefield. But did you know that it was a black general who won most of his battles for him? He was the son of a marquis, one of the highest uh, ranks of nobility in France. And this marquis, tiring of the uh, boring life of the uh, courts of uh, you know, Paris, decided to uh, take on a more rugged life. And he, he moved to Haiti and married a woman by the name of Marie Dumas. Now, a year later, they had a son who was born who was a very dark color, so they say. And this son grew up to be a, a physical giant. Let me read you what uh, he was like, a description. They say that uh, he stood um, six feet two in his bare feet. He was able to bite through a helmet, sit a horse, while under a tree and pull himself up uh, on uh, one of the branches until his chin was over it. This is called a chin-up, which um, everybody does develop their, uh, their arms. But uh, this man did it with a horse underneath him, and he took the horse with him. <laughs> uh, he was also able to fit the barrels of five muskets over his fingers of one hand and then hold that hand out at full arm's length. Fingers fully extended. They say that uh, in all of France, there was only one swordsman he couldn't beat. And that was the Chevalier of St. George, who just also happened to be black. I'll get into that later. But uh, another one of the feats that um, he, this, uh, he performed was uh, to raise his right leg and support two men on his calf and hop around a room. Now, his name also, like his, uh, his son and his uh, grandson who came before him, was Alexandre Duma. Now, I've talked about the other two uh, previously. But let me see if I, I want to show you a picture of what uh, this man looked like. This was Alexandre Dumas. Can you get a good shot of that? <laughs> okay. Now, he was, um, excuse me, he was known to be very generous and kind-hearted, but he also had a short fuse <clears throat> and was easily provoked and consequently fought many duels. In fact, one time, he actually fought three duels in one day. Now, if any of you have ever read The Three Musketeers by his son, Alexandre Dumas, in it, uh, his hero, D'Artagnan, challenges the three musketeers all to a duel at, uh, at the same time, you know, one hour apart. This uh, passage in the book was uh, inspired by his father's duel uh, when uh, he was younger, when he uh, did, he took on uh, three men in, in one day. Now, Alexander's mother died when he was only 11, and uh, this hurt his father very badly. So he stayed on the island of Haiti for another eight years and then decided to uh, move back to France, and he took his uh, young son Alexander with him. Now, Alexander, by around this time, I think he was uh, about maybe 19, objected strongly to, to uh, his father marrying again and uh, decided to leave the household. His father said, if you leave my household, you leave my title with me. So Alexander uh, Dumas, you know, dropped uh, the title of Marquis, gave it back to his father, and just took on the name of his mother, Marie Dumas. So he became Alexander Dumas, not Marquis yeah, Alexander. Shortly after that, uh, he met uh, the daughter of a hotel uh, innkeeper, 
by the name of uh, Marie Labourette and married her. And then he uh, enlisted in the army as a private and had a stunning military career. In fact, he rose from the rank of sergeant to general in only 22 months. In fact, he was a general at 35 when Napoleon was still a major. Now, um, he was also uh, event eventually um, given the, the, the rank, the third highest rank in the entire uh, French army, which was the uh, commander of the Army of the West. Now, Alexander became a legend uh, after his uh, fight in the uh, Battle of Mount Cenis against the Austrians. And here's the, the si situation. This was the situation. The Austrians uh, had hold of this mount, the, the Mount Cenis, and had it fortified in, from every position except one position where uh, it, it uh, was just a steep, uh, almost an up and down cliff. And they left it on guard because they considered it uh, impenetrable. Now, what Alexander did was he attacked from that side of the cliff. He had his men scale the cliff, climb all the way up you know, to, to the top, caught the Austrians completely by surprise, who were completely unprepared for the assault and surrendered without a fight. Now, he was so praised. Let, let, let me read you what, what, uh, what was said about him, the, the praise that he got for that battle. The National Convention said of him, Glory to the conquerors of Mount Cenis and Mount St. Bernard. Glory to the invincible army of the Alps, which was uh, under uh, Dumas' command and those who have led them to victory. We do not know how to describe to you, dear comrades, the enthusiasm that has been created by your brilliant feat of arms. We rely upon you with great confidence and upon the energy and genius of brave General Dumas. Now, you might wonder how if, uh, you know, Gen Alexander Dumas did all these exploits and was a general before Napoleon, you might wonder how Napoleon uh, rose over him. Actually, it was because of a little accident that happened in 1793, during, you know, when the French Revolution started. And uh, they wanted to uh, originally call in Alexander Dumas to quell it, to put, you know, put it down. But he was, uh, at that time, too far away. It would have been like a, a three-day trip before he could get there, and they needed it done fast. So they decided on their second choice, Napoleon, who uh, you know, uh, came in and uh, you know, uh, conducted uh, the military uh, campaign so uh, expertly that he became noteworthy and uh, you know, the center of attraction over Alexander Dumas. Now later on, Alexander Dumas was transferred to Italy, where he served under Napoleon and was uh, instrumental in uh, winning a, a battle, uh, you know, for Napoleon. In that particular, in one particular incident, what happened was they had captured a spy, and um, you know they they couldn't find uh, the message that was uh, hidden on him, so Alexander Duma ordered him executed, and when they asked why. They, Alexander Dumas said, because I'm going to cut open his stomach and get that message out, because I believe that's where he has it hidden. Now, the spy, not wanting to die, confessed to, uh, you know, uh, Ale I'm sorry, Alexander, that he did uh, indeed swallow the uh, message and uh, said he was willing to take a purgative, a, a laxative, to uh, get it out rather than be killed. So, Alexander Dumas ordered a... Uh, a laxative, uh, you know, ordered for uh, the spy, had him drink it. He crapped the message out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's how it happened. Alexander Dumas got the uh, message, which, which had the complete battle plans all uh, listed what, what the enemy planned to do. And so the um, French won that victory. 
Now, Napoleon, in admiration of what Alexandre Dumas had done, sent him a brace of pistols and then assigned him to uh, capture the province, the Italian province of uh, Treviso, which he did and uh, became its governor. And he did such a job, a good job of governing uh, the uh, province that when Napoleon uh, wanted to transfer him out of there, the Italians begged Napoleon to let uh, Alexandre Dumas stay. He was nicknamed the Black Devil by all the armies of Europe, including his own. But because he, have, he had such a disgust for the executions uh, performed during the French Revolution, and because he had saved so many lives from the guillotine, or guillotine as it should be pronounced, um, the uh, civilian population uh, sneeringly uh, nicknamed him Mr. Humanity. Now, well, in Egypt, when he was uh, the commander of uh, Napoleon's cavalry, he performed uh, excellently and was uh, distinguished himself at the Battle of the Pyramids and in the taking of the Grand Mosque. So things were going great between Napoleon and uh, Alexander Duma, but the rift between them finally came after uh, the destruction of Napoleon's navy at Abu Qua. Now this cut off Napoleon's army from France and uh, the, uh, his generals living under the intense heat of uh, Egypt started uh, getting very, very frustrated. So they all held a meeting in Alexander's tent and started bitching about uh, Napoleon bringing them to Egypt in the first place. Now Napoleon heard about this and because the meeting was held in uh, Alexander's tent, he blamed uh, Alexander Duma for, for the uh, in, inciting this whole thing. So uh, Alexander Duma said, look, maybe I'd, I'd better go back to Italy. Well, Napoleon didn't want this. He said, wait a minute, you know. He said, uh, you know, we give it some you know, second thought. But, uh, you know, Alexander Duma was adamant. He says, I already did give it a second thought and I'm leaving. But, well, suddenly, well, that suddenly, uh, I'd say uh, right around that time, the Egyptians uh, led a you know over, led a revolt, and this all of a sudden, uh, Alexander Dumas was needed again by Napoleon, so he was called in by Napoleon to put down the revolt, which he did, and Napoleon was so impressed by his military exploits that um, he had held a meeting, and in which uh, he called uh, Alexander Dumas in and said this of him. Good morning, Hercules. It is you who have beaten the Hydra. Gentlemen, I shall have a picture painted of the taking of the Grand Mosque. Duma, you have already posed as the principal figure. Well, Duma never posed as, as the uh, principal figure because uh, by the time the painting was uh, you know, started, du uh, Duma had already left for Italy. And in place of Alexandre Duma was the uh, picture of a blonde cavalry officer uh, who got the credit for the uh, taking of the uh, Grand Mosque and the quelling of the uh, Egyptian revolt. Now, after the quelling of the revolt, Alexandre Duma did leave Egypt and he first landed in Tarentum in Italy in the uh, Kingdom of Naples where he was promptly taken prisoner because unknown to him, the Italians had retaken the city. They held him a prisoner there for two years, during which time they attempted to poison him. When he finally did uh, get back to France, he tried to uh, re-enlist in the uh, French army, but Napoleon, still angry with him for having left Egypt, ordered that his name not even be mentioned in his presence, and he refused to pay him for the time that uh, he was uh, held in prison, even though the Italians had been made to pay heavily for the uh, act, and he had the money. Recalling this incident, Dumas uh, once said of Napoleon, and I quote, to think that I had him in my arms and how easily I could have strangled him. 
Dumas uh, wrote Napoleon, and um, you know, and, he, and this is what he wrote. In 1793, I was commander in chief of the Republican of the Republican armies. I am the oldest general officer of my rank. Feats of daring performed by me have greatly influenced the tide of affairs. I have always led the defenders of my country to victory. Tell me, who then received more marks of your esteem? And yet now I see officers of all grades junior to me unreservedly employed while I am left inactive. He also wrote a letter to the uh, Minister of War stating, Throughout the unfortunate and difficult time, I was never beaten. On the contrary, my enterprises were invariably crowned with success. I was the companion of the Consul General Napoleon in nearly all his Italian and Egyptian wars, and no one contributed more to his triumphs and the glory of his arms than I did. His letters, which I have in my possession, testify no less to the respect in which he held me. Alexandre Dumas died at the age of 43 as the result of complications from his stomach, resulting largely from the time when he was incarcerated uh, by the Italians. Now, Anatole France, one of uh, France's greatest playwrights, wrote this of him. The greatest of the Dumas was the son of the Negro woman. General Alexandre Dumas de la Payetterie, the conqueror of St. Bernard and Mount Cenis, the hero of Brixen. He offered his life 60 times for France, was admired by Bonaparte and died poor. Such a life is a masterpiece beyond all comparison. One is proud to have such a man as an ancestor. Dumas' statue stands in the uh, Place Malchabay, Paris, near those of his son and his grandson. His name is also inscribed on the Arc de Triomphe. School's out.